Hello and welcome back to Find Your Force. My name's Harry and this is Aaron and we're currently in the middle of an off-roading course in a Land Rover Defender. Uh, and Aaron's going to start telling me now all about the service package on offer uh, within the uh, RAF. Uh, so Aaron, what do you get up to in your spare time? Where's the exit? Uh, where we choose it to be. Oh my lord! So in my spare time, I am a car run motorbike enthusiast. Uh, I love anything to do with sort of engines, mechanics, uh, classic cars and uh, motorbikes. So there's quite a lot of camps that all have a motor club unit uh, or a motor club establishment within their unit. Uh, so it's, a, it's basically a workshop where you can sort of go and embrace your hobby as such, uh, be that with cars or bikes. And it sort of gives you that sort of safe space to work. Uh, where in your own time, uh, and say you can sort of pursue your passion and your hobby. And there's well, there's all that on offer as well. What is there something you haven't done yet that you want to do? What else is on offer? Uh, so there's a multitude of things on offer from uh, FD and AT. Uh, so, for example, uh, some of the more sort of prestigious ones like you, know, you can go and do your skydiving, or you can go track days for motorcycle racing, uh, right down to angling clubs. Uh, so there's a massive variety of things that... What's an angling club? Uh, fishing. Oh, really? So there are uh, fishing teams within the Air Force, as there is a skydiving team uh, within the Air Force. So it's, you're pretty well catered for uh, in any sport that you choose to go into. Uh, you just have to show a willingness and a, a passion for whatever it is that you want to get yourself into. I mean, you clearly love love anything with an engine in it by the sounds of it as well. But sport in general, how much on offer is that within the RAF uh, and how far can that kind of take you? So it can take you as far as you want it uh, to. For example, there's a, a lot of guys in my unit that are into their ice hockey uh, and I say he loves it, he travels all over the world. Uh, recently he's been to Canada uh, to go and play ice hockey. Wow. Uh, and I say the, the more that you sort of put into it, the more you can get out of it. So but from rugby, football, basketball, ice hockey, uh, sailing, there's sort of teams that will cater for whatever it is that you want to do. Now, if you're not that sporty in terms of playing the sport, how can you keep fit? Because obviously that's one of the main things within the RAF, you do need to be fit. So, uh, I haven't yet seen a unit that don't have its own gymnasium uh, facility. So, you are given, uh, obviously, ample time, uh, be it within the working day or, again, if you choose to, in your uh, private time or in your uh, sort of you know downtime if you wish to go and uh, do some fishing you know the gym facilities are open uh, 24 hours a day uh, so there's always uh, sports equipment or gym or uh, e instructors that will sort of take you through any sessions that you want to do oh i get fit in no time now you i mean have i said that right you do need to be fit in the RAF. uh so there is a, a sort of minimum standard level of fitness that is required by uh, anyone uh, in the military uh, so that's sort of a, a baseline uh, across the board uh, both for male and female uh, they need to achieve the required standard uh, to pass their badge of training and then they will need to continually achieve that standard uh, every year uh, via fitness testing every year right okay let's talk travel now uh, and there's obviously travel between bases, but you can go further afield as well. Where, where have you been and, and what are the opportunities like for travel within the RAF? Uh, so opportunities are actually, uh, that again, they can be as good as you want them to be by volunteering for uh, posts overseas or deployments overseas. Uh, and you will usually get sent away uh, sort of as an AS1 uh, every 12 to 18 months and as a corporal every 18 months, uh, um, some, in some cases longer some cases shorter, it just depends on what that unit uh, does and how busy that unit is. Uh, but there is uh, a lot of options uh, and a lot of countries in which you can visit. Is there anywhere you really want to go? Uh, so for myself, what's on your bucket list? Uh, I've been quite fortunate that I've been to quite a few countries, so I'm quite fortunate. Uh, oh God, give, give, me, give me some names. Uh, so obviously I think as everyone has uh, sort of done the Falklands, uh, Cyprus, uh, I've spent quite a lot of time in France. Uh, when I was attached to uh, RAF Beeman. Uh, I think there's quite still a lot of opportunities to go to sort of Estonia, uh, Kenya, uh, and I think Kenya for me would be one that I'd like to uh, 
tick off the bucket list. Oh, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? What about uh, your mental health? Is there much support for that? So mental health, especially in recent years, has become uh, obviously massive, not just in uh, the military, but in uh, sort of life in general. Uh, and yes, there's, there's uh, an array of uh, bodies that you can speak to, uh, be it whatever it is you're suffering, be it family life or just personal uh, mental health not being uh, what you'd like it to be. But no, there's uh, your line management usually are all uh, have a degree of training that they can help you with. And if they come across a problem that they don't feel suitably qualified to sort of aid you with, they can point you in the right direction of the best people that can help with whatever scenario or situation you find yourself in. Ooh, hello, there we go. Oh, on the brakes. Where's the exit? Uh, wherever we choose it to be. Okay, so Aaron, what are the training and development opportunities like within the RAF? Uh, so there's quite a few, again, depending on sort of what you want to get uh, sort of trained on or developed on. If it's uh, more in line with civilian qualifications, I use you to leave uh, the service. Uh, there's resettlement programmes in which you can sort of go to colleges or universities or trade schools uh, and sort of learn the desired trade uh, that you're hoping to uh, sort of get onto uh, once you leave the service. Uh, if it's during the service uh, or during your time and you just want to sort of develop yourself, uh, be it as an instructor or as a, a mentor, uh, there's quite a variety of courses uh, that you can get yourself booked onto. Uh, there's quite a lot of, uh, so we have uh, ELCs uh, and so early learning credits uh, and your standard learning credits. So from there you can sort of use them uh, if there's any, if you want to go back to school for example, uh, either redo a GCSE in sort of maths or English, right? Uh, they can go towards that. Okay, uh, so it, it sort of depends on what area you want to uh, develop yourself in, uh, especially if it's going to benefit the service in uh, some way or another, uh, then it, it's, it's always a sort of a big help, so especially with sort of like maths and English, uh, obviously that, that's always going to sort of benefit the service, the more sort of qualified or competent you are uh, at something, the better. So have you made uh, any use of it in particular with anything for you? Uh, so for myself, I tend to try and get on to uh, as many uh, sort of open university courses as possible um, which are sort of available to us yeah. uh, or available to anyone uh, but the, the military can sort of provide the people that know where to look uh, so you'll approach uh, perhaps your line manager uh, sort of express an interest in an area of development so be it, uh, for example myself I did understanding mental health uh, and I'll direct you to sort of either companies or courses within the MOD that can sort of facilitate that training Amazing. So just again underlines how many opportunities there are available to you. Have you done this before? This is the first time you've taken to this track, isn't it? Uh, yes, I've never been in before today. Um, another thing I want to talk to you about though is this adventure training. What is it and have you done much of it? So uh, I've done a little bit of adventure training. So it can be anything from uh, mountain biking uh, to hill walking to rock climbing. Uh, you know, there's sort of, there's a lot of To off-road driving? To off-road driving. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of areas, uh, sort of adventure training just covers anything that's perhaps not in your normal day-to-day -day, uh, sort of routine work life. Uh, and it just gives people an opportunity to sort of go out, uh, work together as a team, uh, sort of working on uh, relationships and rapport within the section, or just sort of learning how to sort of work better together in sort of types of environments you're not used to. Uh, so yeah, so there is quite a lot of opportunities to go and do it uh, and again it's just put yourself forward for as much as you can uh, and then hopefully uh, if the space is available you can get yourself on it. Uh, well thank you for letting me know all the information uh, surrounding the service packages involved. That uh, brings us to an end uh, on this episode of uh, Find Your Force. We'll see you for the next one. In essence it's a very basic Land Rover Defender. Uh, it's got five forward gears, one uh, reverse gear. Out of all the vehicles you've driven off-road, what's your favourite? 